Hello, welcome to my lesson. I'm going to use the question answer approach to take you through a topic called introduction to chemistry in chemistry. My name is Masika Michael. I teach at Nasokol Girls Secondary School in West Pokot. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel called Chemistry Revision Master to get a video format of uh, these notes. And the objectives, uh, by the end of this topic, the learner should be able to explain what the study of chemistry is all about, name and state the uses of common apparatus in the laboratory, the learner should be able to describe a burns and burn and its flames. The learner should be able to state laboratory safety rules. And the content in this topic will include a review of uh, topics that were learned in primary, like properties of matter, states of matter, mixers and their separations, conductors and non-conductors, mention of drugs, uh, chemics, chemistry and the society, definition of chemistry and its role in society, then chemistry laboratory where we shall talk about heating apparatus, uh, parts of the burns and burn and flames, measuring apparatus uh, and other apparatus and lastly we shall talk about laboratory safety rules. But before we embark on uh, this, uh, allow me to say something about uh, chemistry. In, uh, when you are in primary, you are taught science and now when you come to uh, high school the same science is still there but this science is divided into three subjects that is uh, chemistry biology and physics on my part i'm going to deal with the part of chemistry Now, I would like you to understand uh, some of the topics that you learned in primary so that uh, you can understand what chemistry is all about. What is uh, matter? And uh, matter is anything that uh, has mass and occupies space. I would also like to remind you to name the three states of matter. The first one is solid state liquid state and gas state. Solids include substances like uh, like the, the, the common table salt, um, like stone, like iron metal. Liquids are like water, uh, like kerosene. Gases are like carbon 4 oxide and uh, oxygen and nitrogen. Then these states of matter can change from one state to another. And I'm going to take you through question C. Study the diagram below and use it to answer the questions that follow. The solid moving through process A to form liquid. Liquid changing through process B to form gas. Gas changing through process C to form liquid. Liquid changing through process D to form solid. Solid changing through process E to form gas. Then gas changing through process E, uh, process F to form solid. So name the process represented by the letters A to F. Let's start with A. The process of changing from solid to liquid is called melting. Then B. B, the process of changing from liquid to gas is called boiling or evaporation. Then C, the process of changing from gas to liquid is called condensation. D, changing of state from liquid to solid is called freezing. E, change of state from solid to gas without passing through the liquid state is called sublimation. F, change of state from gas to solid without passing through the liquid state is called deposition. Then, state the properties of the three states of matter. Starting with the solid, Solid has a definite mass, definite volume, and definite shape. Liquids have a definite uh, mass, 
definite volume but uh, they take they have indefinite shape so liquids take the shape of the container when it comes to gases gases have a definite mass but no definite volume and shape then another thing that you learned in primary was about mixtures so what is a mixture is just a substance consisting of two or more substances in which individual components retain their physical or chemical properties then can you be able to name two methods that can be used to separate mixtures yeah we have a number like winnowing sieving filtering evaporation decantation and use of a magnet then uh, define the following terms and give an example of each conductors conductors are just substances which allow electrical energy to flow through them e.g. copper aluminium graphite zinc and steel then nonconductors are substances which do not allow electrical energy to flow through them e.g. glass wood rubber and plastic then uh, let's also remember try to recall something about the drugs and drug abuse define the following terms drug a drug is any substance natural or manufactured which when used alters the way the body functions and uh, what are medicines medicines are drugs used to treat diseases in humans human beings and animals then doses what are doses these are specific amounts of medicines administered by qualified medical officers and what is prescription prescriptions these are written instructions by a qualified medical officer giving details on the type of drugs and how the drug should be used and drug abuse is use of a drug for a purpose other than what it is meant for and overdose and underdose of uh, prescribed drugs also constitute drug abuse then name a uh, four harmful effects of drug abuse one of them is stress depression hallucination addiction they can also be dependency on drugs and vascular disorders like especially when you take heart or mira then mental disorders especially uh, this one is caused by uh, abuse of bang lung cancer this one is caused by abuse of tobacco and liver cirrhosis which is caused by abuse of uh, alcohol then name for commonly abused drugs the most common one we have uh, drugs like tobacco alcohol bang and mira uh, many uh, many of these drugs are frequently abused then uh, let's say let's uh, try try to relate uh, chemistry and society now having looked at what uh, what chemistry is all about what is chemistry chemistry is the study of the structure properties and composition of matter and the changes that matter undergoes then state the three roles of chemistry in society one of them is manufacture of drugs to fight diseases secondly food production to fight hunger thirdly manufacture of cheaper alternative fabrics like rayon polyester and tetra uh, next manufacture of plastic for roofing packaging and domestic use next manufacture of detergents next chemistry is also applied in production of fuels for transport and domestic use and lastly chemistry offers entry into careers then name me uh, three career opportunities open to a chemist one is like medicine pharmacy food technology education and engineering who is a chemist this is just a person who works with the chemicals then uh, 
uh, let's look at the chemistry laboratory. What is a laboratory? A laboratory is just a building or a special room where chemicals and apparatus are kept and in which practical subjects such as chemistry are studied. Then, what are apparatus? These are equipment used to perform experiments in the laboratory. But uh, give three reasons why most laboratory apparatus are made of glass. The reasons include, uh, for visibility, since glass is transparent. Two, glass does not react with most laboratory chemicals. And three, glass is ish easy to wash. Then in the laboratory we have many different apparatus. I'm going to start by looking at the apparatus used for heating. Name three apparatus used for heating in the laboratory. One is burns and burner. This is the most common. Next is spirit lamp. Next you can also use a candle, a gas stove, which is also called a portable burner. Then a kerosene stove and lastly an electric heater. These are the apparatus that can be used for heating in the laboratory. So let's look at the buns and banner. Draw a well labeled diagram of a buns and banner. So this, what you can see here is a, a setup of a buns and banner. You can see it has a part called the chimney. The chimney is a metallic uh, tube. Then uh, there is the collar. Uh, the, we have the air hole. The air hole is here. The, another part of the banner is called the jet here. And there is the base. There is a base here, and there is the gas inlet. So we can be asked to state the function of each of the following parts of the bands and banner. The chimney. This, this is the chimney. Its uh, function is a mixture of the laboratory gas bands at the top, at its top to produce a flame. There is a flame that's normally produced at the top here. Then the air hole. The, the, its function is that uh, it allows air to enter the chimney and mix with the laboratory gas. Then the collar is rolled, is replaced the amount of air entering the chimney. And the jet, uh, its function, it allows the laboratory gas into the chimney. And the gas inlet uh, is a connection to an external source of the laboratory gas by a rubber tubing. And lastly, the base, the base uh, supports the Bunsen burner. Then, now that uh, a Bunsen burner produces a flame which is used for heating, let's look at the meaning of the word flame. What is a flame? A flame is just a mass of burning gases. And therefore, there are two types of flames produced by a Bunsen burner. The one is called a luminous flame, another one is called an unluminous flame. So my question is, draw uh, a well-labeled diagram of a luminous flame and an unluminous flame. So the one, the first one, this one, is called uh, a luminous flame. Uh, looking at it, it has uh, four zones. This zone, which is the, more, the outermost zone, is called the thin outer pale blue zone. The next zone from the outer side is called the bright yellow zone. Then the third zone, which is the innermost zone, is called the almost colorless zone. And this zone that is down here is the blue zone. And this luminous flame is produced when the air hole is, the air hole of the Bunsen burner is closed fully. Then this other flame that you can see here is called a non-luminous flame. Uh, as you can see, it has three zones. The outermost is called the pale blue zone. The next from the outer side or the middle is called the green blue zone. And the innermost zone is called almost colorless zone. So this is the structure of the two types of flames produced by the bands and ban. So state four differences, uh, the differences that you can see uh, between a luminous and an aluminous flame. One is that uh, when looking at the luminous flame, it has four zones, while the non-luminous flame has three zones. Then the luminous flame is bright yellow, but the non-luminous flame is pale blue. A luminous flame produces much light, but the non-luminous flame produces less light. Luminous flame is large and wavy. Non-luminous flame is small and steady. Luminous flame is sooty. Non-luminous flame is non-sooty. 
then luminous flame produces less heat but a uh, non-luminous flame produces uh, more heat and also luminous flame is produced when the air hole is fully closed but the non-luminous flame is produced when the air hole is fully open then as we have seen the luminous flame is sooty explain why the luminous flame is sooty uh, it's due to insufficient supply of air as a result of closure of the air hole there is incomplete burning of the laboratory gas resulting in formation of carbon or soot so the soot is carbon then the another thing to discuss about these flames the diagram below represents a setup that can be used to investigate the effects of an luminous and a, a luminous flame so this is this is the setup in this setup there is a beaker one beaker is being heated using a luminous flame this is being heated using a luminous flame uh, and, and this other beaker contains water also is being heated using an unluminous flame then the question is uh, which water sample took a shorter uh, period to boil explain so the water sample that was being heated using an unluminous flame boiled faster because an unluminous flame is hotter than the luminous flame then what was observed at the bottom of each beaker a soot was at the bottom of the beaker that was heated using a luminous a flame but not at the bottom of the beaker heated using an unluminous flame because the luminous flame is sooty but the non-luminous flame is not then uh, give a reason why the non-luminous flame should be adjusted to luminous flame when the Bunsen burner is not in use this is just to avoid fire accidents since the luminous flame is more visible than the non-luminous flame then describe an experiment that can be carried out to investigate the hottest part of an unluminous flame. Firstly, light a Bunsen burn and adjust uh, the flame to non-luminous. Then quickly slip either a wooden splint or manila paper in the almost colorless region and immediately remove it. Then repeat the experiment by placing another wooden splint or manila paper in the pale blue region. It will be observed that uh, the wooden splint or manila paper placed uh, at the almost colorless region is partly burned or partly charred uh, due to presence of unburned gases while the one placed in the pale blue region is uniformly burned hence the pale blue zone is hottest and uh, therefore when burning substances uh, using a, 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 a non-luminous flame then you should place the substance being burned or heated in the pale blue zone because it's the hottest this will be the appearance of the wooden splint placed at the almost colorless region and this is the appearance of uh, the wooden splint placed in the in the pale blue region you can see the wooden splint placed in the uh, in the almost colorless region the middle part of the wooden splint is not burned because the middle part or of that wooden splint was in contact with the almost colorless region which contains unburnt gases then the one placed at the top that is the pale blue zone of the aluminous flame the there was complete burning or char charring of the wooden splint because of uh, complete burning then for the when manila paper are used this is the appearance this one is the appearance of the Manila paper placed in the almost colorless region and this is the appearance of the uh, Manila paper placed in the uh, in the pale blue zone and this shows that the pale blue zone is the hottest part of the non-luminous uh, flame then give two reasons why the non-luminous flame is preferred for heating over the luminous flame the reason is because the luminous flame is hotter than the non the non-luminous flame is hotter than the luminous flame. Two, the non-luminous flame is not sooty, unlike the luminous flame which is sooty. Then also briefly explain why the luminous flame is bright yellow. Uh, incomplete burning of the laboratory gas 
due to inadequate supply of air result in the formation of carbon particles which reflect light. That is why the luminous flame appears uh, bright yellow. Allow me to take you through the laboratory uh, apparatus used in the chemistry laboratory. First and foremost, I'll take you through the apparatus used to measure volume of liquids. So draw a name of the apparatus used to measure accurate volume of liquids. One of them is the volumetric flask. You can see the appearance. They are normally of different sizes. Like this one is of 250 ml. We have one of 1 liter. You can have one of 2 liters, 5 liters and so on. Another one is a syringe. This is the syringe. Another one is a pipette. This is the pipette. Another one is a burette. This is a burette. Then uh, they draw and name the apparatus used to measure approximate volume of liquids. Uh, we have a number like the beaker. This is a beaker. Another one used is a conical flask, this one, and a measuring cylinder. Then, discuss the apparatus used to measure temperature. Uh, temperature is measured by use of a thermometer, and there are three types of thermometers, the maximum and minimum thermometer, clinical thermometer, and general purpose thermometer. And this is the diagram of a thermometer. Then, discuss the apparatus used for measuring time. Time can be measured by stopwatches and stop clocks and uh, this is the diagram of a digital stopwatch used for measuring time then discuss the apparatus used for measuring mass mass can be measured using weighing balances and uh, they, are they are of different types like the beam balances this one is a beam balance there's electronic balances this one is an electronic balance and uh, top pan balances, this one is a top pan balances. They are used for measuring mass. Then we have other apparatus used in the laboratory. Uh, the test tube, like the test tube, the, which is used for general laboratory experiments. The boiling tube, which is used when heating substances. The trough, this is the diagram of a trough. And the trough is used for holding water for experiments, especially when collecting gases over water. And this one is a round bottom flask. This one is a round bottom flask, which is used when heating liquid substances because the heat is distributed uniformly so that the flask does not crack as it expands. Then what you can see here, this one is a flat bottom flask and uh, it's used for general laboratory experiments. And this one is a filter funnel. A filter funnel is used for delivering liquids carefully into vessels. And this one is a thistle funnel, which is used for delivering liquid substances in reaction vessels. Then this one is a separating funnel, uh, which is used for separating immiscible liquids. Then this one is a dropping funnel, which is used to add controlled amounts of liquids into reaction vessels. This one is a conical flask, and is used for general laboratory experiments and for measuring approximate volume of liquids. This is a re reagent bottle which is used for storing bench reagents. This one is a wash bottle and used to hold water for rinsing vessels and for adding water to vessels with narrow necks. Then this one is a teat pipette also called dropper and is used for delivering liquids dropwise. This one is an evaporating dish and is used when evaporating liquids. This one is a spatula. It is used for scooping solid substances from containers. This one is a gas jar and it's used for collection of gases. This is a desiccator and is used for drying or keeping substances free from moisture. This one is a crucible and is used when heating uh, solid substances that require strong heating. This one is a pipe clay triangle and it's used for supporting crucibles during heating. This is a wire gas which is used for even distribution of heat when heating substances in beakers or flasks. This is a tripod stand which is used for supporting beakers and flasks during heating. This is a mortar and a pestle. And 
they are used for crushing substances. This one is a test tube rack which is used for holding uh, boiling, test, uh, boiling tubes and test tubes. This is a deflagrating spoon uh, used for holding uh, substances being burned in gas jars. This is a pair of tongs which is used uh, to safely hold corrosive or hot solids. This is a test tube holder which is used for holding test tubes when they are being heated. This is a clamp stand which is used for holding and supporting pieces of apparatus during experiments. Then, the last part of this topic is uh, laboratory safety rules. State all the laboratory safety rules. I'll just uh, take you through a few. One, never run while in the laboratory because you may trip, fall and injure yourself or other users of the laboratory. Two, never test or eat anything in the laboratory to, avo to avoid poisoning. Three, always consult your teacher before trying any experiments to avoid accidents. Four, always label all chemicals uh, you are using to avoid poisoning. Uh, five, use a clean spatula for scooping a substance from a container to prevent contamination. Six, hold test tubes or boiling tubes using a test tube holder when heating to avoid being burned. Seven, always work on a clean bench, clean all the apparatus used at the end uh, before keeping them. Eight, chemicals already used must always be disposed of safely to avoid contamination. Nine, if a chemical gets on your skin or your mouth, Rinse it immediately with a lot of clean water. 10. Always extinguish flames that are not in use to avoid accidents and minimize fuel wastage. 11. In case of a serious accident such as a fire, calmly walk out, do not scramble for the exit as doing so will hinder easy escape. 12. Report any accidents to the teacher or laboratory technician immediately for necessary action. 13. Always keep flammable substances away from flames as they can easily catch fire. 14. Experiments in which poisonous gases are produced should be carried out in a film chamber or in open air. 15. Never smell gases directly. Instead, waft the gas towards your nose with your hand. 16. Never look directly into flasks and test tubes where reactions are taking place because the chemicals may spurt into your eyes and cause injury. 17. When heating a substance in the test tube or boiling tube, never let the open end face you or anybody else because the liquid may spurt out and cause injury. That is all about the first topic of uh, Form 1 Chemistry Introduction to uh, Chemistry. And uh, don't forget to subscribe uh, to my YouTube channel that is a chemistry revision master uh, to get notified when I upload the next video after subscribing turn on the notification uh, button